Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session we learnt about the instruction types which involve the AND operation. In this session we are going to learn about the instruction types ORAR and ORID8. These two instruction types involve the OR logic. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session. At first we are going to learn about the basics of OR operation. Thereafter we will learn about the first instruction type of the day that is ORAR. And finally we will conclude our session by learning about the instruction type ORID8. So let's begin with the basics of OR operation. Now coming to the logical group of instructions provided by 8085 microprocessor, we already have seen in the previous session that it provides the support for AND logic, OR logic, XOR or exclusive OR logic and NOT logic. Today we are going to learn about OR. Now just like AND, OR is also a binary operation. That is, we have got two operands which will be involved in this operation. For the first operand, it will reside inside the accumulator register. Coming to the second operand, we can send it to the microprocessor via three different ways. First, it can be the contents within the GPRs, that is, any of the general purpose registers. Thereafter, it can also be the content of the memory location, which will be pointed by the HL register pair. Finally, we have another way to do it. We can send the operand to the microprocessor via the 8 bit immediate data through the instruction itself. The instructions that we are going to learn today, ORAR, is going to handle these two cases. On the other hand, the next instruction that is ORID8 will handle the 8 bit immediate data situation. Let's now focus on the basics of OR operation. I just told you, just like AND, OR is also a binary operation. So let's suppose we have got two binary inputs X and Y. Now with two inputs, we already know there will be four different sequences 00, 01, 10 and 11. Now if we perform X or Y, focus on the name OR. The output will be 1 if X or Y is 1. Now notice the first case. In this particular input sequence, both of them are zeros. So clearly, since none of them are ones, therefore the output is zero. On the other hand, in the rest of the cases, either y is one or x is one or both are ones. So for these three, the outputs are always ones. Now this OR operation is also known as inclusive OR and the reason for that is, if you remember in the previous session I told you, when X and Y both are ones, then only the output will be one. And here, X or Y supposed to be one. So clearly, since OR is also including the logic of AND, that is, if both are ones, then also the output is one, this is the reason why it is called inclusive OR. Anyway, this is the truth table for OR logic, and I believe you have seen this quite a few times, but today we are going to look at it from a different perspective. At first, consider these two rows. If you notice, we have reset the Y input to be zero. Now in this specific case, whatever we are sending via the input X as the output that is being generated. So if X is zero, the output is zero. If X is one, the output is also one. So from this we can state x or 0 will always give us the value x. Now from a different perspective, if we consider these two rows, notice, if we set the input of y to be 1, in that case, whatever we are sending via x, it doesn't really matter on the output. The output is also always 1. So from this we can state x or 1 will always result in 1. Now, using this particular logic, we can selectively set bits of the accumulator. Now, in the previous session, when we were applying AND logic, if you remember, using the logic X AND 0, we could selectively reset the bits in the accumulator. Whereas in case of OR, 
the logic x or 1, which is always supposed to give us 1. Using this, we can selectively set the bits of the accumulator. Let's suppose we want to set the most significant bit of the first operand within the accumulator. In that case, the operand 2 will be chosen specifically, keeping the most significant bit as 1, and the rest of the bits in the second operand can be zeros because we don't want to alter the remaining bits. So this way, we can selectively set the bits of the accumulator. And the reason for that is, after the operation is done, the result will also be stored inside the accumulator. Let's now talk about the flags register. Since we are dealing in logical instructions, the status of the carry and the auxiliary carry flag is predefined. If you remember, in case of AND, the carry flag was reset and the auxiliary carry flag was set. But that's not the case for OR operation. Intel has specified, in case of OR operation, both the carry and the auxiliary carry will be reset. Now coming to the status of the rest of the flags, these will depend on the content of the accumulator after the operation has been performed. So do remember, using this OR logic, we can selectively set the bits of the accumulator. So that was all about the basics of OR operation. Let's now focus on the first instruction type of the day, that is ORAR. Coming to the instruction type ORAR, it stands for OR accumulator with R. So in the mnemonic ORA, the OR is coming from OR and the A is coming from the A of the accumulator. Another thing to note in here, since we are performing OR, just like I mentioned earlier, both carry and auxiliary carry are to be reset and the remaining flags are affected based on the accumulator's content. Now, if we focus on the instruction type ORAR, it falls under the category of one byte long instructions. Now, if we talk about the specific instructions of this particular type, since we are using capital R, you know, the instructions are going to be ORAA, then ORAB, C, D, E, H, L, that is, all the different general purpose registers. Along with these, we will also have ORAM, that is, the memory location which will be pointed by the HL register pair. So, as I mentioned earlier, using this instruction type ORAR, the first two cases, that is, the second operand can be a content of the GPR, that is, any of the GPRs, or it can also be the content within the memory location pointed by the HL register pair. Let's take an example now to understand the working of this instruction type in a better way. Say within the accumulator register, we have got the first operand 1, 2. And within the E register, we have got the second operand, that is, AB. Execution of the instruction ORAE is going to perform OR between 1, 2 and AB. Now, 1, 2 in binary is going to be 0001, that is the 4-bit equivalent of 1, and 2's 4-bit equivalent is 0010. So, 8 bits, which are the contents of the accumulator register. Coming to AB, A's 4-bit equivalent is 1010. And B's 4 bit equivalent is 1011. So again, 8 bits, which are the contents of the general purpose register E. Let's now perform the OR operation because that will happen if we execute this particular instruction. Now notice, in case of OR, I have already told you, whenever any of the inputs is 1, the outcome will be 1. Now focus on the least significant nibble. Notice, here we have 1. In this case, both of them are 1's. However, here we have got zeros in both of them. And in this particular case, we have got 1. So the output is going to be 1011. The reason why we didn't get 1 in here as well is, both the inputs were zeros. Let's focus on the most significant nibble. Notice, here we have 1. We have got 1 in this case as well. But in this place, we have got zeros in both of them. And in this case, we have got one again. 
So the outcome for this is also going to be 1011. So after the execution of ORAE, within the accumulator register, the contents are going to be BB. Now why is so? The reason for that is the 4 bit binary equivalent of B is 1011 and we are getting two of them, isn't it? Let's now talk about the flags registers as well. Like I mentioned earlier, both the status of carry and the auxiliary carry are fixed and both are to be reset. Now coming to the remaining flags like parity, zero and sign, we will depend on the content of the accumulator. It was also mentioned that the remaining flags are to be affected based on the accumulator's content. Now within the accumulator, we have got these 8 bits. Let's now check whether the parity flag will be set or not. Well, if you notice, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That is, 6 ones we have inside the accumulator. Now 6 is an even number, so the parity flag will be set. Because the parity flag is only set if within the accumulator we have got even number of ones. What about Z flag? Since we have even number of 1s in here, so the Z flag is going to be reset to 0. Now what about the sign flag? Notice the most significant bit within the accumulator, it is 1. So the sign flag is going to be set. So this will be the status of the different flags within the flags register. And within the accumulator register, we will have the content as BB if we execute the instruction ORAE, where at first within the accumulator we had 1, 2, and the second operand which was loaded inside the E register, AB. Do remember the instruction type ORAA falls under the category of one byte long instructions, and since we are performing OR, both carry and auxiliary carry are to be reset. So that was all about the instruction type ORAR. Let's now focus on the next instruction type, that is ORID8. Coming to the instruction type ORID8, it stands for OR IMMEDIATE WITH ACCUMULATOR. So one of the operands are going to be inside the accumulator. Now since we are performing OR, it should be noted down that both the carry and the auxiliary carry are to be reset and the remaining flags are to be affected based on the accumulator's content. Now if we talk about the instruction type ORID8 with respect to size, Notice, we are sending the 8 bits of data within the instruction itself. So, ORI will occupy 8 bits and 8 more bits we are sending via the instruction. So, cumulatively this entire instruction will fall under the category of 2 byte long instructions. And remember, since we are sending the data in immediate addressing mode via the instruction, therefore for this particular type, there will be a single opcode. Let's now take an example for better illustration. Say within the accumulator register, we have got the first operand 45. Now the second operand we are going to send via the instruction itself and it is F3. So if the microprocessor executes the instruction ORIF3, the OR operation between the operands 45 and F3 will happen. Now 45 in binary is going to be 0100 followed by 0101. I hope you already know this. 4's 4 bit binary equivalent is 0100, and 5's 4 bit binary equivalent is 0101. Coming to F3, the 4 bit binary equivalent of F is 4 ones, which will be followed by 0011, that is the 4 bit binary equivalent of 3. Let's now see what will happen if the execution of this instruction takes place. We will basically perform OR operation. And I have already told you, in case of OR, whenever any of the inputs will have 1, the outcome is going to be 1. Now notice, here both of them are 1's. Here we have 1, and also we have 1 in here. But in this place, we have got zeros, So the outcome is going to be 0 followed by triple 1. Focus on the most significant nibbles. Notice, we have got all 1's in this. So the outcome is also going to be all ones. So after the execution of ORIF3, within the accumulator, the value F7 will be loaded. Now can you tell me why exactly F7? If you notice, after the OR operation, 
the outcome that we get is four ones followed by zero triple one. Now four one is the binary four bit equivalent of the hexadecimal value f, whereas zero followed by triple one is the binary four bit equivalent of the hexadecimal number seven. Let's now talk about the flags register. Well, the status of the carry and the auxiliary carry flag are fixed, and both of them are to be reset. So we should only talk about the parity, z, and sign flags. Coming to parity, it is to be set if only within the accumulator we have got even number of ones. Now, do we have that? Four ones, then three ones, so seven ones. Now seven is not an even number, so the parity flag will be reset. What about the z flag? Well, we have got seven ones in here, so it can never be set. It will be reset too. What about the sign flag? Most significant bit within the accumulator is one, so the sign flag will be set. So this is going to be the status of the flags register, and within the accumulator we will have the content as F seven, that is four ones followed by zero triple one. If prior to the operation within the accumulator we have got four five, and the execution of the instruction ORI F three takes place. Do remember. The instruction type ORID8 falls under the category of two-byte long instructions, and since we are performing OR, therefore both the carry and the auxiliary carry flags are to be reset. So that was all about the instruction type ORID8. So in this session, we covered the topics, basics of OR operation. Do remember, unlike AND, using OR operation, we can selectively set the bits. Whereas in case of AND, we can selectively reset the bits. Coming to the instruction type that we have learned today, ORAR, it handles the two cases where the second operand can either reside in any of the general purpose registers or in the memory location pointed by the HL register pair. ORAR also falls into the one byte long instructions category, just like ANAR. On the other hand, the instruction type ORID8. It falls under the two-byte long instructions category, just like ANID8. And using this instruction, we send eight bits of data in immediate addressing mode. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to learn about the instruction types which involve the exclusive OR logic. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.